Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, uh, where I'm privileged to be joined today by the creative team on the Titan Comics published graphic novel, Adler, all about the woman from the Sherlock Holmes mythos, Irene Adler, created by uh, master author, Lavi Tadar. Hello, mate. Good to see you. Hello. Thanks for having us on. And master illustrator, Paul McCaffrey. Uh, it's how it's it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to have you on how are you both doing yeah we're, we're great thanks well i am <laughs> <laughs> um as you can see my you know what hair i have left is just growing all over the place so i'm just holding on for dear life that is lockdown for you right guys now we now we're here to talk about this uh, this amazing graphic novel that you've put together for my colleagues at type comics um, Adler, this is uh, the volume one graphic novel, uh, which is publishing on March the 30th and which you can pre-order from the links attached to this interview. Um, guys, can you give me a flavour or give the audience a flavour of what the what the story is about on Adler? Well, I think, I think it just looks great. So, I mean, don't worry about the story. It's just great art that Paul did. So just buy it for that. You know, how often do you get something in full colour at an affordable price? <laughs> um, You'd be crazy not to buy yeah, it. It's, You'd be crazy not to buy it. Yeah, it's, a rollicking, it's a rollicking action romp. It's a ripping yarn. It's all about the story. It's not about the pictures. So, guys, <laughs> g give me a flavour of, of when it takes place and what's happening without any real spoilers. If you could set it up for our views, that'd be awesome. Well... It's kind of it's set at the end of a never of a Victorian era that never really existed, you know. So I think I took 1902, 1903 as my as my time because that's in our timeline. That's when Queen Victoria dies, and the Victorian era sort of comes to an end. But really, you know, we still get that weird Edwardian period, and then we go World War Two, World War One, in the beginning of the 20th century. So it was kind of looking at the end of the Victorians and the beginning of the modern era. Um, but it's essentially set in the Victorian London of the Victorian fiction. It's not the real London. So I've taken, you know, I've taken all the characters from the books I love and kind of mixed it all together and put, you know, a, a fantastical element in it. So it's, it is, as Paul said, it's very much, I think the Victorians were so good at writing um, adventure excitement you know so we've got references in there to like the, the prisoner of zander yeah. you know which is really just an action adventure book that um, that is a lot of fun i mean we've got everything from a bit of great expectations in there to um, a bit of out and out pulp and you know one of the fun things with doing something like this because i don't have to do anything i just write stuff and paul has to do it and i was like can you do me a big victorian death ray machine at some point and, uh, you know, one reason he took so long to actually make this graphic novel was, you know, Paul kind of did say to me, you know, it's not that easy actually drawing the stuff you want, you know. Um, the easy thing for me is just to put, yeah, Death Ray Machine. Paul's the one who has to do this amazing two-page spread of disintegration, which is no spoilers. Yeah, that touches upon something I wanted to ask Paul, actually, which is in addition to the amazing death ray, which is worth the price of admission alone. Uh, and that, that, and what you just referenced, actually, Levy, which is all the all the amazing uh, uh, fictional characters who appear out, you know, not just Sherlock Holmes universe characters, but all these amazing female protagonists you have in the book. Um, uh, one thing that strikes me is just the sheer amount of... Um, visual reference paul that you've, you've you've brought into this series um from that period in uk history and correct me if i'm wrong you've even used the the old egyptian hall that used to be located in piccadilly and no longer exists now how much work paul did you personally have to do to work all of that visual reference in in the beautifully expansive way that you've illustrated it um, well, a lot of it, um, the dull answer is, and the true answer is Google Images. You know, it's there's so much visual material out there online. Um, you've kind of got no excuse now for not getting it right, or at least 
not making it look feasible. You know, I mean, we are dealing with a sort of steampunky, you know, as, as, as Levy said, um, it's a Victorian era that never really existed. So you've got some latitude with uh, playing around with things. But you, I, I, can't, I always felt like it was more about what you didn't do as much as what you did show. So, you know, there are certain things you knew you couldn't get away with. Um, so you've got to kind of get that balance right. But yeah, you know, the Egyptian hall, I've never heard of it before. Um, a few Google images and I think, oh, there it is. You think, wow, that, you know, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, the, there's no kind of secrets. Um, it, it's just doing it all online. Yeah. yeah. And, and clearly putting a, a, a ton of work into it. How long did it take you to, uh, to illustrate what was this series and is now this graphic novel? From start to finish, how long did it take to put all that artwork together? Well, I uh, I started in twenty <laughs> and finished. <laughs> it did take a lot. I, I am slightly embarrassed. I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. Oh, but, I'm yeah, terribly um, sorry, mate. I I felt it was indicative of the sheer amount of work you put in. No, it's yeah, more let's an put it this how, way: oh, this was this was announced in San Diego Comic Con in 2013. Yeah. To be released the following year, I think so. Of course, Paul had to wait until there was a global pandemic to release. <laughs> well, um, it's funny so. you should mention that because the person who did that announcement on stage at the Diamond Retailer Appreciation event was me. So I remember, I remember <laughs> announcing um, that, that it was coming, and I've been waiting for it all this time. So yeah, I did yeah. have an idea how long it's taken to put together, but I think. You can't argue with the results, guys. It's an amazing book. Uh, and, and Thank I'm, you. I know, it truly is. I mean, well done. It's, it's, it's such a great piece of work. Now, what was it about Irene Adler herself that, that pulled you both in and inspired you to produce this series about her? I mean, for me, it just comes from irritation and anger and bitterness, usually. So... That's kind of where Adley came from. Um, you know, I, because I love the, the Sherlock Holmes novels and stories, I mean, not so much novels maybe. Um, and obviously she's one of the great characters. And I, I really love the small characters in Sherlock Holmes. So you'll, you'll find, I think, Roiler the Poisoner from the Speckled Band. He appears as one of the villains uh, very briefly. So Adler is really just a minor character from Sherlock Holmes who appeared in like one story and gets referenced a couple of other times, but yeah. she's obviously been one of the more, you know, like Moriarty who never shows up very much, but they've yeah. really captured the imagination. And what really frustrated me was actually the media adaptations of the character. I just thought they were terribly done, you know? So at some point I sat down and for some reason, I don't know why. I thought, well, they've, they've done it terribly. I've got to kind of do something good with it. Um, and I wrote this whole thing in like two months. I wrote the original draft. And then obviously didn't have any idea what to do with it. Like, because, you know, and, um, and things sort of worked out that, you know, Paul was talking to Titan and I was talking to Paul. And um, I think we literally just went with, the one line pitch and and a page of art and and title comes so go ahead and do it <laughs> um so but that, that's where it started from i just wanted to give us agency yeah yeah that, that I, I and 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 you've you've done a great job with that could you uh give give us a few more specifics um i, I know what the list is but i want you guys to talk about it of the some of the other key uh female adventurers and female uh classic characters that appear in this graphic novel well that was part of the fun is obviously hunting for some of these characters now i'm a huge fan of uh, miss havisham from great expectations i think she's one of the great characters um of the era and it was fun to take not not actually uh, miss havisham but estella uh, her adopted daughter you know who breaks pip's heart in great expectations and kind of have hair as just a, a, a slightly eccentric steampunk scientist in, uh, in our Victorian, our version of Victorian London. Um, so she was a lot of fun. And Paul, I think, you know, did it really well. There's a scene, I think we're introduced to her, her eccentric side when we see her shooting watermelons in her mansion, in her garden. Uh, using some weird contraption. I thought that was just great. I just, I just thought the way Paul did that. 
Yeah, I, you really yeah. get that. I think that's probably my my favourite page in the in the whole in the whole um, series. You know that one page. Just yeah, it's it's a nod to um, the the opening sequence of the Avengers TV series and also Day of the Jackal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them, you know, the the villain Ayesha is obviously from H. Rider Haggard. Um, Jane, who is sort of our introduction to the story, was on our, our Doctor Watson, if you will, our narrator. Um, she wasn't really meant to be a specific character. She wasn't meant to be Jane Eyre, or she's more like she's a Jane because everyone's a Jane in in that period. You know, it's a bit like Lucy. Um, if you look at the name Lucy, it, you know, you've got a Lucy in Dracula, you've got a Lucy, like, you know, Lucy Narnia later on, you've got, Lucy's are everywhere in British fantasy, so it was kind of like that, but then when we were actually do, putting together the comics, Titan wanted a bit more kind of like, well, who is this character, what is she doing, we actually ended up writing um, little um, summaries or little introductions for every issue which I don't think are actually in a trade paperback. And, and so you get a little bit more of a sense of Jane's background and um, you get a few references to, uh, to Jane Eyre in there and stuff like that. So on that note, if you want to do a deep dive into, a, into some of the background on, on Adler, you're going to be able to order the graphic novel uh, from the links attached to this interview. You, you are going to also be able to order the issues of the comic that Forbidden Planet still have in stock. So why not get both of them? That would be my advice, you know, just to furnish that detail. I, I love the fact that you guys have jammed together all these characters and then, then Paul, that your references widen out to include not all these great heroines of like Victorian literature, but also the title sequence of the Avengers and Day of the Jackal. That's a set of references that I personally love. So uh, the fact that you've got the freedom to, to jam all of that yeah. together as your influence, I think is amazing. Now, I suppose, yeah, you kind of soak up all this stuff and it kind of seeps out somehow, you know, somewhere along the line, yeah, like a pustulant boil. <laughs> and on that pustulant boil note, or maybe not, um, did your illustrations of those, those classic female protagonists did you pull those out of your, 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 you know, your own subconscious? Did you, did you refer to the original illustration plates in, in the books where they first appeared? What was your process for creating those guys visually? Um, well, I'm pretty lazy, really. So um, the, my starting point were the television and film versions. Um, I think, uh, again, going back to the Avengers, I had originally um, depict. Uh, I was going to draw... Adler as a sort of Diana Rigg type character, try and model her on Diana Rigg, but I just found Diana Rigg so difficult to draw. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, so um, I kind of just came up with my own version of it. Um, I think the main motivation was trying to keep the, the female protagonists sort of fairly distinct visually from each other, which some people think I've managed to do. Some people think I haven't, and all my women look the same. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, with, with with Estelle Havisham, uh, I wanted to kind of go for the sort of white colour scheme, which referenced the uh, the bridal gown of um, Miss Havisham from Great Expectations. Um, uh, I wanted to make it look a little bit uh, eccentric. Um, so again, sort of the wild hair. Uh, originally, I'd uh, depicted her in a sort of straight jacket all the time, but that didn't quite work. And the kind of crazy puffball hair, but uh, that was a bit much. Yeah, Jane, you know, she's a kind of slightly softer, uh, warmer character. So um, I tried to reflect that uh, the way I drew her, her. And, you know, the ex-military thing went for the sort of earth tones, khakis and greens. Yeah, stick out of the ring, give her red hair um, to reflect her personality. Um, stuff like that. Um, just kind of, um, yeah, again, nothing clever. Just kind of cobbling bits together from all over the place. Yeah, but, but then the, these characters like, say, Moriarty. Um, just went straight to the uh, the Sydney Paget illustrations because oh, well, yeah, I think you can't. Yeah, there's there's nothing better than that. I, I couldn't yeah. top that. So yeah. just my version of Sydney Paget's Moriarty. 
Carl Miller, again, uh, just wanted a, a bit of a contrast from the other characters. Uh, Aisha, uh, yeah, that was Ursula Andrus, I'm afraid. <laughs> again, not, 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 not deep or clever. Um, so, yeah, these bits of Ursula Andrus, Xena, Warrior Princess, and Frank Frazetta's Warrior Women sort of in there, really. So yeah. I, I love it. I mean, yeah. I, I was going to ask you guys about... Uh, I think it's glorious that you've got both Camilla and Aisha in the book. And um, just back to your comments about Diana Rigg, what was it you found? I pres I'm presuming you you, you were, you were going to explore kind of assassination bureau style Diana Rigg, I would imagine. You know, yeah. it would be. Oh, yeah. um, what was it that you found? It, what was it that you found difficult about uh, illustrating her? Um, I found, in terms of her features, uh, there wasn't really a lot that I could sort of get to grips with um, to make sort of consistent from scene to scene. If I'd had like um, a lot of visual reference, I could have just copied that from, you know, uh, from, from one scene to, to another. But to try and extrapolate what she would look like from a certain angle based on uh, the reference I could find, I found it very tricky. So, um, yeah, I kind of gave up on that. OK, that's that's very interesting. Uh, and Levy, um, would you would you like to get the chance to do to, to do more Adler in the future? Um, I mean, I wouldn't I don't mind. Paul's been Paul's been asking me to do it. I mean, basically, you know, we were having a conversation. We're working on a new project at the moment and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And Paul. You know, Paul kind of said, actually, you know, I really like working on that. He said, I spent seven years working on Adler. I'd like to do more. And it never crossed my mind that Paul might actually want to do more Adler. I thought that would be the last thing he wants to do. So um, so he kind of he pushed me into doing some more research and finding some some cool stuff, you know, because I always start with the actual historical stuff and the, yeah. and the historical fiction stuff and then kind of see what comes out of that. And so, you know, there's some cool stuff that you could do. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't necessarily mind doing another Adler. Um, I've got notes for it, put it this way, if, if, if it ever comes out. That, that sounds like a sterling endorsement if ever I heard one. I mean, that was, uh, that's, uh, that, the fact that you've got the notes and you know, we know where to go with it. I would, I'm just telling you guys, I would love to see some more. I think it's, uh, I think it's very satisfying. And everybody who's been watching this interview with um, the mighty Levi Tadar and the, the mighty Paul McCaffrey is going to really enjoy this book if you haven't picked it up already. So uh, Adler, the graphic novel, is publishing on March the 30th. And you can buy it from the links attached to this interview. And it's a wonderful genre-bending mashup of historical drama uh, high adventure and gothic fantasy. It's really a supremely enjoyable piece of work. Thanks for finding the time to speak to us today, guys. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Take care. I'll see you soon. All the best. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. Bye. Bye bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, Subscribe right here. See you soon.